Today we're going to show you how to set up a Wacom tablet to work better in Photoshop. The tools we use should be an extension of ourselves. The writer has a pen, the painter has a brush, but what does a Photoshop artist use? A mouse? Oh god. <sighs> well, there's a better tool for the job. This is a Wacom tablet. They make editing in Photoshop easier and you have more control over tools like the brush tool. Much like a colored pencil or a paintbrush, the harder you press, the more paint you'll apply. You can also change the size of your brush simply by changing how hard you press. I've been using a tablet for over 10 years and I wouldn't think of editing my images without one. Now for this video, we're using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium tablet, and this is a brand new tablet. It has not been set up. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you download the drivers from Wacom's website. And that's going to put preferences in your computer. So let's go ahead and show you what I use to set up my tablet so I can work faster in Photoshop. After installing the drivers, I've got my Wacom tablet here in my system preferences. Let's go ahead and click there. You can see we have our device information. We've got some different functions. You can turn touch on or off. Mostly we're gonna be hanging out right over here with our pen. And you can see we have options for the pen, eraser, and the mapping. Now, starting off here at the pen, we have our tip feel. And this is basically how hard or how soft you press on your brush. I prefer having a little bit of a harder tip feel. So we're just gonna take that and bring that right up. And you can press pretty hard with these things. I've used many tablets over the years and you really don't wind up wearing these little nibs out too fast. So don't worry about pressing hard with that. And here you get a good idea of how hard you're actually pressing. Now here in the bottom, this is a super important one, double click distance. This is like with a mouse, you can double click somewhere and it does something. All right. Now the same is true with your tablet, but it assumes that you're not going to be clicking this in the same exact place twice because there's a little bit of movement here. Now it's super important here that you take this double click distance and turn it off. You want this completely off or in Photoshop, sometimes it waits for you to click again for that double click distance and it will just totally throw things off. So big one here, make sure to turn that off. Next we have our tilt sensitivity. Now some brushes in Photoshop will know if you're tilting your pen from one side to another and have different effects. I don't tend to use those brushes very often, so I just leave this tilt sensitivity back to normal. Now, the next thing we want to do is change our button layout because I want to be able to undo with my pen. I'm all the time make mistakes and I want to undo very quickly. So the first thing we're going to do, the pen actually has two buttons on it. There's a forward button and a back button. Our back button here, I'm going to change this to a keyboard keystroke. There we go. Now you can actually just hold down the keys and undo or step backwards in Photoshop is option command Z. So just hit option command Z. I'll just call this undo. There we go. And we're going to hit OK. So now literally every time I hit that, it's going to undo in Photoshop, which is sweet. Now, our next button is right click. This is forward. I just leave that where it is because brush tools, all kinds of menus in Photoshop, you want to be able to right click to open up more menus. So I have undo and right click. Now, moving on to the eraser. You can flip this thing around and have it activate, for instance, your eraser tool. I have literally never ever done that <laughs> other than to see if it works or not. I just do this and I hit E for the eraser tool or B for the brush or usually I just use layer masks, so I pretty much don't even use the eraser tool. But anyway, if you like the eraser tool and you feel like flipping it around, you can do that. I pretty much just leave this eraser tool alone. And now we're moving on to the mapping of your tablet. And that's a big deal because the size of your tablet correlates to the size of your screen. Now, for instance, if I grab my pen and I move up here to the top left of the tablet, you can see I'm at the top left of my screen in Photoshop. 
And as I move down to the bottom right of my tablet, I move down to the bottom right of my screen. Now, this does make sense. However, I'm moving my hand quite a long distance to actually move across my screen. If I just grab a mouse, I can move it right up here and I'm at the top of the screen and I can move it right down here. I'm at the bottom of the screen. So I'm moving the mouse, you know, maybe an inch and I'm having to move the tablet, you know, 10 or so inches just to move across the screen. So we can set this up to change the proportions. So I'm only gonna use a portion of the tablet and have that correlate to the screen. So here we wanna choose screen area. You wanna make sure that is on full. You wanna be able to edit the entire screen. But your tablet area, we wanna choose this as a portion. So what you can do is click to define this area. I find it easy to just take these markers here and then bring them up. I like to use the top left of my tablet. So now this whole area of the tablet down here becomes deactivated. Only the top area is active. And you can see I'm able to move around my screen much easier. And in this case, I'm gonna make it even smaller. So we're gonna click there and make that even smaller. And now without really much movement at all, I'm able to get to the top left of my screen and the bottom right and I don't have to move my hand at all. It's very similar to sensitivity on your mouse. The more sensitive you like your mouse, the smaller the portion you wanna make sure you use on your tablet. Now comes the other features. We do have touch sensitivity as well as a number of buttons on these tablets. Now, touch sensitivity is cool. I personally don't use it. I find it kind of gets in the way. And we have buttons where you could, for instance, control the brush size. You could set keyboard shortcuts in here. And to be honest, I don't use those either. I really enjoy using my keyboard for my keyboard shortcuts. And when working in Photoshop, I find that is the easiest method for me. So I have my tablet here in my right hand and I use my keyboard shortcuts in my left. If I need, I can just jump over and grab a key over here and then go back to my tablet. So here in the touch menu, I'm actually gonna just disable everything. We're gonna uncheck all of these things and basically this is gonna say, okay, cool. Well, now we don't have touch on this tablet. Again, it's a personal preference, but I don't find it really helps me. Our functions, we're also just gonna turn these off as well. So we're gonna click on each of these and go down to disabled. There we go. Now you can see you do have a lot of different options here. And of course, this is totally up to you as far as how you'd like to use it. For me, the tablet works really well simply as a tablet. I don't really need all these other things. I just disable all of them. There we go. But you can see, for instance, you could have this scroll and zoom and rotate the canvas and all kinds of other things. But for me, I just find it easier to disable all of it. Now we've got our settings how I like them. Let's go ahead and open up an image in Photoshop and show you how the brush actually works when editing a photo. Here in Photoshop, we're gonna use the brush tool to show you pressure sensitivity, but you can use pressure sensitivity with a number of tools like the clone stamp tool, the healing brush tool, spot healing brush tool, basically anything that you can paint with in Photoshop, you can use pressure sensitivity. To start off, we're gonna go to window and down to brush settings. Now your brush settings, we're gonna go ahead and turn everything off. And as I turn everything off, this is basically going to be just like you were using a mouse. So let's just make our brush a little bit larger. And you can see as I paint here with my mouse, it looks surprisingly like with our mouse. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with our tablet and just being a little bit smoother because I'm using a pen instead of a mouse, it really looks the same. Now we start to introduce pressure sensitivity. So let's go ahead and start up here with our shape dynamics. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. Now you can see we have control options in many of our different settings that will allow us to choose pressure sensitivity, pen pressure. So for instance, our size jitter, as I turn this from off to pen pressure, you can see a little preview here, making the brush larger as we press harder. So I'm not pressing very hard right now and we have a very small brush. And as I press harder, we're getting larger and larger. Now you can change the control of many different factors. For instance, if I were to bring in scattering, let's go ahead and turn that on. I can turn this to pen pressure as well. Let's go ahead and bring our scattering up a little bit. So if I don't press hard, this brush won't scatter that much. And the harder I press, you can see it continues to scatter more. Not only that, but our brush is getting larger as well because we still have our shape dynamics turned on. Let's go ahead and turn off scattering and let's turn on transfer. Now, this is one of my favorites. I have my flow jitter set to pen pressure as well. Let's go ahead and undo that. 
If I don't press very hard, it's not going to create a lot of ink. And the harder I press, it's gonna put down more ink and at the same time gonna make my brush larger and smaller. Now you do have more controls. For instance, if you want your brush to be a little bit larger than that when you start off, which I recommend doing, you can go into your shape dynamics again and bring up your minimum diameter. And you've got a really great preview of what's gonna happen here. So as I bring up my minimum diameter, you can see my brush is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. As I press harder as I go down, my brush gets larger and darker. And this helps me work very naturally in Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and choose a larger brush and I'm gonna bring my flow really, really low, down to about 10%. Now with this large brush and a large minimum diameter, as I paint in Photoshop, you can see I'm barely putting anything down. And if I decide I wanna just press harder, I'm able to put more and more ink down. So I'm able to basically paint a gradient based on how hard I'm pressing in Photoshop. Let's just undo that. And with all the same settings, I'm gonna use my mouse and you can see this is basically what I get. It's going to look the exact same no matter what I do with it. Now let's go over the keyboard shortcuts that I use with a tablet so I can work faster in Photoshop. Now this first one will change the size and hardness of your brush really quickly. It totally like blew my mind when I learned this. Now I'm working on a Mac computer so the keyboard shortcut for me is going to be control and option and I'm going to click and drag. If you are on a PC you're going to hold Alt and right click and drag. So let's go ahead and do this. Control and option on my Mac. Now as I click and drag from left to the right, my diameter of my brush changes. You can see I get larger and smaller as I drag from left and right. If I go up and down, it changes the hardness. So as I go up, we have a hardness of zero. And as I go down, we have a hardness of 100, making it very easy for me to create a very small hard edge brush or a very large soft edge brush. I can see everything that I'm doing very, very quickly, which allows me to work very quickly in Photoshop. For instance, if I wanna go ahead and zoom in, and let's say we wanted to do a little bit of work, I'm gonna hit the clone stamp tool just to show you you can use the same settings with the clone stamp tool, okay? If I wanted to do some work here with our some pore removal or some little bit of cleanup, I can choose a size and a softness that's about the size I need there we go. We're just changing our brush size as we need it. And that looks really good. I'm able to do a little bit of pore removal. And now as I get a little bit larger, let's say I want to remove this, instead of using a small brush, I just simply grab a large brush, sample this area, and we remove that little area. And you can see it's all completely done. The next keyboard shortcut will allow you to zoom in and out of parts of your image super fast. Hold down spacebar and command if you're on a Mac, spacebar and control if you're on a PC. This will bring up your little zoom toggle and you can simply click anywhere you'd like to zoom, drag to the right to zoom in and drag to the left to zoom out. If I click down here, it'll zoom to that area. If I click up here and drag, it'll zoom to that area. Now you can hold the spacebar down to simply move around your image. So if I want to do some retouching, I'll hold spacebar and command and zoom into my image get nice and close, and then I can hold spacebar to move around. Now, for instance, I can grab my clone stamp tool, use my other keyboard shortcut to make it nice and small, and go ahead and retouch a little area there. Then I can zoom out and see how the image looks as a whole. So these keyboard shortcuts will allow you to change the size of your brush and your zoom level. Those two work interchangeably to allow you to edit small areas of your image very accurately and quickly, as well as large areas. Now let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of using a tablet versus using a mouse. In this case, we're gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning on our subject. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. We're just gonna double click. I'm gonna call this tablet. There we go. And using, I'm gonna use the exact same brush for both of them, by the way. So to start off, let's go ahead and change our layer blend mode from normal to soft light. And here, as you can see, I'm able to change my brush pressure as well as size as I'm editing. Now, my goal here is to paint a little bit of a highlight. So for instance, I can zoom in, I can paint a little bit of a highlight around my subject's nose. There we go, right up there. A little bit of a larger brush for the cheek and right here under the chin. We'll make it a little bit smaller and a little softer. I'm also controlling how much 
effect is actually happening based on how hard I press with my brush. There we go. We'll just do a little bit of lightning around here as well. Now we're going for a subtle effect. I'm not trying to do a super, super effect with my dodge and burn. Kind of brighten that cheek a little bit and this area there. So turning this layer off and on, you can see we've done a nice job dodging our subject, just bringing some highlights into our subject's face. Now let's create a new layer. We're just gonna double click here and we'll just call this mouse. And we're gonna use our mouse to do the exact same thing. So this layer is set to soft light. Let's make it invisible and turn our mouse layer to soft light as well. Now with our mouse, I can still use my keyboard shortcuts to make my brush larger and smaller, but I don't have any control over how much ink or paint they actually put down. So as I start to dodge with my brush here, there we go. Uh, trying, yeah, even with my brush larger and smaller, yeah, I, I can't do this. Let's try bringing our flow down to give us a little bit of help. So we'll bring our flow down to about like 30% and then see if we can do this. There we go. That's getting a little bit, a little bit better, but I'm lacking all the finesse that I had with the original layer. And it just kind of looks like blotches of light rather than areas that are actually enhancing. I'm actually trying to do a good job here. I, all right, maybe if I lower the flow even more, there we go. Let's make that a little bit smaller. It is legitimately hard to do a good job uh, with this. Uh, and that's because it applies the same amount of ink in all places. And sometimes you want to be able to apply more. Let's say I'm, I'm dodging and burning here, right? So if I want to make a dark spot a little bit lighter, you want to apply more ink there, so you press harder. In other areas, maybe you just want a subtle highlight, you wouldn't press as hard. But with a mouse or a trackpad, I simply don't have that option. It's a one or the other. And that's just one small example of how these make a huge difference working in Photoshop. That's how I set up my tablet to work faster and more efficiently in Photoshop. Now, I know this video may have sounded a little bit like an ad. I'm just a huge Wacom fan. I did not get paid to make this video. I just like really do use these things all the time. You've probably seen them in literally every single Flurn episode, and I figured it'd be helpful for you guys to know how to use one. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right down below. We'll send you free tutorials every single week. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone. That's the episode in the bag. In it. Get in that bag. I don't want to get in the bag. Too bad. Get in the bag. You're already in there. We finished the episode. Put it in a little ball, open the bag, put it in there, close the bag. <laughs>